Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here for video number four for our introduction to integration by parts. We got a pretty special example plan here, maybe one that you may not like so much, uh, but maybe if you stick around for another video or two you might change your mind about that. But what we've got here is a repeated use of integration by parts and it's really important. I want you to, to see this problem and, and it's very likely that we may revisit this and talk about it again. But as you see it's this example four. I'm going to kind of scroll down a little bit here, maybe move my camera, and we see that we are asked to integrate x squared times the sine of x. So hopefully you can recognize this as a problem that's certainly going to require integration by parts. We see the fact that there are two things being multiplied. One of them is a transcendental. That's a Taylor made integration by parts problem. So you're going to go through your progression, right, to pick your u and your dv. I always set up my u uh, something like this, where I put it in the upper left and then my dv I typically put in the lower right and the philosophy is you work down to take derivatives you work up to take integrals. Go through the progression u should be something that's logarithmic. Well of course we don't see anything that's logarithmic here so we go on to the next part. Inverse trigonometric we don't see inverse trigonometric so we move on to the next one algebraic and lo and behold our x squared is considered algebraic, so we're going to go with that. That's going to be our u, and that's going to force our sine of x with respect to x to be the dv. Fortunately, it's not going to be too tough to take the derivative of u, so du would equal 2x dx, and then we'll integrate the dv moving upward. Be very careful with this. The antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine. We need to be really on top of that. Anytime you integrate and you get a trig word that starts with the letter C as your answer, you're going to have a negative sign in front of it. So what we know about this is that the antiderivative of x squared sine of x with respect to x is equal to our formula says u times v, so that would be negative x squared cosine of x. And then we take that, subtract, and we have the integral of v times du. Now, if you'll notice here, the v is already negative. And, and so I would suggest that you go ahead and change that, that minus to a plus, and then just apply those two pieces, 2x cosine of x make things kind of easy for you there. All right. Now, if you take a look a little bit closer at this integral, integration of 2x cosine of x, the first thing that you should notice is, well, wait a minute, that's still a multiplication problem. I'll put the little dot there to emphasize. And it still is a multiplication problem that consists of a transcendental function, cosine. So, yep, you bet, you guessed it. You're going to use integration by parts again. And that's where the, the word repeated comes into play here. So I would suggest <laughs> rewriting that first part because I've seen a lot of students forget that that's part of the answer and just kind of blow that off. And, and so we're going to you know, want to make sure that we remember that. In fact, in fact, you guys, I think what I might do is have, have us move it down a little bit. Now we get to do a U dv substitution again. I'm going to use a different color to kind of indicate that it's a different version of u and dv. And then I'm also going to do something else, something that I don't know, maybe you won't like this, but a little story. I had a professor once in Calc 2 long ago who, whenever we used a repeated use of integration by parts, was very adamant that we do not use the same variables u equal for a completely different thing within the same problem. And we would even lose points on that. So we were told to use subscripts. For example, in this first substitution, all of these u's and du's and v's and dv's should probably be subscripted with a one. And therefore, in this version, all of my u's and dv's and, and soon to be du's and v's should have a subscript of two. I'm not gonna hold you to that. I'm gonna be fine if you just basically reuse those variables with the mindset that they're not really meant to be the same. Um, but 
in case you run across that same professor, I doubt he's still teaching, but there might be other professors like it that are a little bit stricter about notation. I want to model that for you. All right, what are you going to use for your U2 and your DV2? Well, the U2, U2, we still haven't found what we're looking for here. So the U2 is going to be the same part of the integrand. It's going to be the 2x, right? We still want to use the algebraic part. And the dv2 will be the cosine of x, dx. And so when we take the derivative of u2, we get du2, and we get, obviously, 2, right? And, and, and we'll swing over the dx. And then when we integrate dv2, we get v sub 2. And the integration of cosine, that is positive sine of x. All right, I might have to move this down even more. All right, so you write down that first part, I have it, and then we drop down our plus sign, and we do our u2 times v2, right? So when these two guys are multiplied together, we get 2x times the sine of x. Really, we never worry about how ugly the u times v is because we don't have to integrate it, right? uv can be as ugly as we want. We have a subtraction in the formula and the integration of v2 du2. So that's the 2 and the sine of x with the dx. Oh my gosh, we have another integral in this problem. But good news, this integral can be integrated without any future use of integration by parts. Reason being is that we're not multiplying two different things together that both contain x's where one is transcendental. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to try to use integration by parts on this, it actually works, but it's kind of a waste. So what we have is negative x squared cosine of x plus 2x sine of x. And then if we very carefully, very carefully take the antiderivative of 2 sine, we would get negative 2 cosine because the integration of sine is negative cosine. That's going to change that minus to a plus. The 2 just drops down. Boom, we have our cosine of x. We can finally put our plus c. Just a little reluctant to circle this answer because you know what I like to do. I like to check it on the calculator. So let's do it. So here we are with our TI Inspire. And we're going to take our shift plus And we're going to get rid of those boundaries and type in our integrand, which was x squared. I always, always seem to be yelling a little bit there. Let's not yell so much. So lowercase x squared multiplied by the sine of x and we'll do so with respect to x and the result we get we might have to take a look at this in fact in fact i think what i am going to do i'm going to i'm going to do a little witchcraft here so i'm going to i'm going to kind of modify this a little bit and oh if i can grab the border that would be awesome but it's not wanting to let me do that so i am going to drag this into the document and see what we have here, guys. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to change my window here just a second. Okay, everything is resized. And I just basically want to take a, a closer look at this result we have because we can distribute this cosine of x into that expression if we wanted to get a little bit better handle on this. So we have 2 cosine of x minus x squared cosine of x. And then, of course, the 2x sine of x right here. And what we can do is compare that term for term. And it does match this answer, albeit everything is written in a different order, of course, but it is equivalent. And it's probably easy to see that. So sometimes certain graphing utilities might, even Desmos might even uh, do things where they rewrite things in a little bit of a different order. So you have to be cognizant of that. But anyhow, we know that this is correct and we can circle it. So that really concludes the first day of content from integration by parts. We have a second day devoted to it with a few more videos that have some very interesting twists. It's when integration by parts gets maybe a little ugly, but I got a surprise for you. The first few videos are actually going to start really nicely. In fact, maybe we'll pay a visit to example four and think about a different way to do that. So anyhow, we hope you tune in and we'll see you next time.